And I, I feel excited to deliver it. Na leo nina furaha kubwa. I want us to stand on our feet. Nataka sote tusimame kwa miguu yetu. We invite the man of God. Tumkaribi mtumishi wa Mungu. He is a prophet. Ni nabii. He prophesied to me. Alinidabiria. I want you to prophesy to you. Nataka pia kutabirie. After the service in the afternoon. Baada ya ibada masaa jioni. He is going to bless the children in our village. Anaenda kubariki watoto kule kijijini kwao. Wetu ni pale panaitwa Kalie. Pale Kalie. Goloni hapo chini. Amen. We have a children ministry there. Wako na huduma ya watoto pale. He is going to speak a blessing. Ataenda kuwanenea baraka. Amen. Amen. I want I want the Lord just speak to us today. Nataka Bwana akanene pamoja nasi. Before the before the end of year. Kabla mwaka hujaisha. Tomorrow is Christmas. Kisi. Let us hear what the Lord has for. Wacha tusikie vile Mungu anasema nasi. Father in the name of Jesus. Baba katika jina la Yesu. We present this pulpit. Tunatuleta madhabahu haya kwako. Into the hands of the living God. Mikononi mwa Mungu aliye hai. I thank you for Reverend Zomo. Ninakushukuru kwa Reverend Zomo. And his precious wife. Na mke wake wa dhamana. And this church. Na kanisa hili. For giving us an opportunity. Kwa kutupea nafasi. To be a part of this service. Kwa sehemu ya ibada hii. I speak life. Na nena uzima. To this ministry. Kwa huduma hii. I speak the progress to this ministry the unity that i have with this man of god it is going to bear fruit in the season of time and i am praying right now bless this church bless this ministry bless this work as the prophet of god comes to stand on this pulpit. i pray for the presence of god I pray for the interpreter that the flow of the spirit of God and the word of God and what the Lord has for us today may you speak to us like you spoke to Moses at the hour of being desperate at the hour of coming to an end you spoke and you saved Israel may you speak to us through the vessel that you brought today as a darker city the darker city in the name of Jesus let everyone today go home different because there is a voice that can change our lives in this day in the name of Jesus let us welcome the man of God with the mighty hand of God hallelujah hallelujah Jesus right now and thank him for what he's about to do. We can thank him for what he has done and we do that right now Lord we thank you for all you've done but now we want to thank you also for what you're about to do because new things are about to happen. All right. Thank you musicians, thank you singers, you may have your seats, God bless you, I love you. All right, all right, all right. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Asante, yes. Let's look at Isaiah 64. I want to make that like a little uh, foundational text. So we're happy to be in Cumberland. Let's lift our hands and say hallelujah. <laughs> so I greet you. I say, watch out. Ah. <laughs> hey, all right, all right, all right. You, you look at me like, what? You know what that means, right? Uh, watch out. Uh, Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Thank God for the pastor of this church. 
Ay, 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 ay. Thank God for the pastor. This, are you on? He's, you're not on. Sound man, his mic is not on. Shakarantelebo shalaba. Thank God for this property, for this land, this town. And uh, God's going to do some amazing things here. Let's lift our hands and pray over this place. We thank God for the man of God that you put here, Lord, to shepherd the people, bless the people. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is going to do such amazing things. I, I, I see it. I see it. God's going to raise up deliverers. I began to say this in the first service. The book of Obadiah has a, as a verse. Obadiah was a prophet who only got one chapter. <laughs> His whole book is just one chapter. Yeah, you're doing good now, son. Very good, very good. Keep it up. <clears throat> All right. And it says there will be saviors on Mount Zion. Now let me speak this very strongly. That can never mean that there's another savior. There's only one name under heaven where men can be saved is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the son of the living God. There's only one. One son, the king of kings. There's only one. So I begin to ask the Lord, what can this mean? Save yours. That would mean more than one. And the Lord began to show me many years ago about this verse. It means I'm going to raise up people like myself filled with my power to go throughout the land and produce miracles. Somebody say praise the Lord. How many know God anoints men to do his work? How many know the gospel cannot be preached unless somebody is sent? Yes? Hallelujah. So the Lord anoints men. Anything you want to get done in life, you have to do it. Under the hand of God. When you're frustrated, you have to break your way out of it. When you're frustrated, you have to break your way out of it. When you're having a problem, you need to know how to solve the problem. And by the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit will always give us ways to get things fixed. And then the things that we can't fix ourselves... He raises up other people... And even he himself begins to help us get things fixed. How many know God is our helper? How many know he's the one that fixes things? Say a big amen. Amen. The Lord spoke to me some months ago, a few months ago. And I'm going to write a book about this. I couldn't get it done yet because I'm so busy writing other books. And I brought one of my books here today. And the foreword was written by the great archbishop. Harrison Nanga. And he even published a book for me. As a seed. Because he believes in me and my ministry so much. The Lord has had me preach for him ten times this year. Beginning in November of the previous year. Ten times in the last one year. And... Uh, 
uh, th- this book is a phenomenal book about successful living. I'm going to give people a chance to get this today here, but I won't be the service. But uh, I want to write a book about with a title, God is Fixing Things. Lift your hands if you believe that he can fix it. I heard the Lord so clearly speak that to me. I was preaching for one of the former president's relatives. President Uhuru Kenyatta. One of his relatives. Has a church somewhere. And somebody from the government brought me there. And it was an interesting place, I'll tell you. <laughs> and I got there and I was sitting there looking at this place saying, where am I? If I could show you a photo of where I was sitting, you'd be shocked. Because somehow the place wasn't done very well. But there I was. And they even had a gate in front of the pulpit. I said, what is this, a prison? There was literally a gate with a closing metal door that locks. I thought, what? Who are you trying to keep out of the pulpit? I, I felt like telling the gentleman, open that thing and get rid of it. Take that fence away and leave it open. Now you have a nice one here. It's okay. But at least you can walk around and come up, you know. So I'm sitting there before they invite me to speak. And honestly, I didn't know what I was going to talk about. And the Lord spoke to me so clearly. He said, tell the people I am fixing things. Hallelujah. And the Lord said, I'm working behind the scenes to fix things for you, my son. I'm also going to do it for my people. And I was like, my God. And, and the pastor there was so excited. He said, man of God, you don't know. This is what we needed to hear. So I, I'll tell you that. The Lord is, is not asleep concerning us. Can you say thank you? No, Say thank you to the Lord. Psalm 121 says, He's not asleep concerning Israel, but he's not also not asleep concerning Thomas. Israel is only one place on the earth. It's very important. But what about all the other nations and the people? The cannon is blinking. I think you need to change the battery. Uh, Hi. Brian, change the battery on the cannon. It's blinking. It's not... or plug, you should have plugged it in. Can you plug it in? Just plug it in. Get the plug and plug it in. Right, right, right. So the Lord is very interested in our lives being successful. I'll get to my message in a minute. This is just my introduction. I have another topic I'm going to speak about here. That the Lord spoke to me last night. About. So, he's not asleep concerning us. Lift your hands and thank him that he's, he's looking after you. He's looking after you and your family. He's looking after you and what you need. He's looking after you. Don't ever think that God is not there. 
In fact, he's right here. Oh, now you buy to eat it, boy. Hallelujah. Because he came with me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope he came with you. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and say, Lord, you're right here. You're, you're not somewhere else. You're here. The miracle about God is he can be everywhere at the same time. He's omnipresent. Meaning he could be here, but he could also be other places. At the same time. Men can only be in one place at one time. He, even a devil can only be in one place at one time. But I'll tell you where the devil is. He's right here under my feet. And that, put your foot down. That's where he remains. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has one place. Not here, not here, not here, but here. So who is he? People make too much of a big deal about the devil. Just forget about him. Curse him, cast them out, bind them, and throw them off. Uh -huh. And if you really want to have victory in warfare, this is what you do. When the devil came to Jesus, he told him, it is written. Right here Papa. is the solution. Someone say praise the Lord. Say praise the Lord. Say it in Kikamba. Say praise the Lord in Kikamba. Uh, you teach me that one later. I want to learn. Bon ass if you Praise the Lord. Tell the devil, Quenda Uko. Toka Hapa. Say, Majinga devil, go away. You're an idiot. The devil is stupid. You know that? You know the devil is stupid. How could you think you could fight God and win? So don't pay him too much mind. He's a loser. He can, he can never be saved. He's just going to burn in the lake of fire and that's the end of it. Lift your hand and say, I'm totally free from the devil. He, he, has, has, he has no place here. He has no place in me. He has no place anywhere in my life. And my loving God is fixing things for me. He's taking care of issues that I have need of to take care of. And he's Jehovah Jireh. The God who provides all good things. He's El Shaddai. The one who's more than enough. He's Jehovah Shalom. Shalom. The destroyer of chaos. And the bringer of peace and power and prosperity. And a, a, a definition of shalom also is this. Nothing broken and nothing missing. No chaos, no fear, no problem. Everything's good. Everybody say Hakuna Matata. Hakuna, Hakuna Shida. Say I am blessed. Me, I'm blessed. Say me, I'm blessed. Say me, I'm victorious. Say the devil can't stay near me. Come on, lift your hands and receive the touch, the touch of the Holy Ghost. We need to have our eyes open to understand, you know, who we are. And who God is to us. I have to tell you here something. Never disappoint God by doubting him. No matter what you see or what you feel. Or whatever problem you have. 
Just say, God, I thank you that you're fixing this for me. Wave your hand to the Lord and say, yes, Lord, I know you're doing it. You're fixing things for me. Everything that I need and want, I'm going to have it now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when the scripture talked about saviors, in Obadiah, it means they're representatives of God. He's the king of kings. He's the lord of lords. He's the god of God, God small g. He's the big G, he's the big K, he's the big L. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. But we're lions on the earth. Amos 3.8 says when a lion roars, everybody fears. Look at your neighbor right now and say, are people afraid of you? They should be. Because if you're, if you're like from the lion of the tribe of Judah, all the hyenas and everybody else, they run away. I saw a video. I saw a video of a lion that was wounded, a male lion, young male lion. And he was bruised very bad. He was cut, he was cut very badly. And about 20 hyenas came around him. And, and the hyenas saw that the lion was down, you know? He couldn't walk. He couldn't get up. All he did was turn his head and look at the hyenas and they backed up. You, you know hyenas, they got short legs in the back, yeah? And big legs in the front. They went with their little legs like this. All the lion had to do was turn his head toward them. And they backed away. Because they know the power that the lion has. Come on, somebody. They know the power that he has. Even in a wounded state. Hey, that's yeah. right. And the, and the hyenas were going. You know the laughing hyenas. You know they're amazing. Huh? God made these things. They go. And the lion just turned his head. And they all just. And they couldn't get him. Finally, after a while, this is powerful what I'm going to tell you right now. The lion's brothers came over there. Come on, somebody, if you're going to get what I'm saying. The lion's brothers came. And rescued him, and the hyenas took off. Come on, somebody. That's just like God. That's just like God. When we need help, He sends people. He sends our brothers. Because we're all representatives of the Savior. Lift your hands. Say, I am. Say, I am. A representative of the Savior. And I have power. Say, I have power. Over all principalities and powers. I have power over all of them. Because of the touch of God upon me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, let the Holy Spirit visit this property here. I feel right now the angels of the Lord are coming. They're around. Something's about to happen here in the next few moments. 
Something new is going to happen in the town of Tala. Something is going to happen in this, in this region of Ukambani. The eastern side. It's going to, something great is going to happen here. Something new is going to take place. Lift your hands and pray right now for me. Shapo renta lesa kuchi kati salamahanchi lesa kaya. Farete sokolaba chole bahaya Lord, we thank you for the sanctification of this land. Yes, thank you, Master. We glorify your name. Thank you for the sanctification, Lord, of this land. Cleanse out every witchcraft, every demonic force. Everything that's gone wrong for people, fix it for us. Because you and I are still bigger than them. Wow, are you okay? You and I together, Lord, are better than them. And the Lord's going to make that very clear to us. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Just lift your hands. The presence of the Lord. I, I feel the presence of the Lord. The atmosphere is changing. The atmosphere is changing right now. Something's happening right now here. The Lord said in Isaiah 64, through his prophet Isaiah, he said, Oh, that you would rend the heavens, Lord, and come down that the place which be shaken even the mountains at your presence and as the fire burns and as fire causes water to boil to make your name known to your adversaries. That the nations may tremble at your presence. And when you did awesome things, even things we didn't look at, you came down and the mountain shook at your presence. Watch this now. For, from the beginning of the world, Men have not heard or perceived. There's a matching scripture to that in uh, 1 Corinthians 2.9. That says, I have not seen, ear not heard, nor did it say to the heart of man the great things that God has prepared for those who love him. But watch this now. He said, you haven't seen it yet. Uh, and maybe you weren't looking but God acts for the one who waits for him lift, lift your hand and say Lord I'm waiting for you he acts for the one who's waiting for him when your faith is in motion and your expectation is in gear, God begins to come and answer by fire and do things for us. Lift your hands and say, Lord, do it for me. Are you tired of having seen everybody else have a testimony? But it wasn't you. But it needs to be you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, it's time for my testimony. It's time for me to shine. Three chapters back in Isaiah uh, 60, four chapters back in Isaiah 60. He said, arise and shine. So that's our work to do that. No, no, no. To arise and shine. He says, though gross darkness covers the earth. That's there. 
But my light will be seen upon you. What is God saying also through that? Don't look at what the enemy is doing. Look at what God is doing. Hallelujah. Put your hand on your heart and say, Lord, please, it's time for me to shine. It's my time to shine. It's my time to arise and shine. Thank you, Jesus. It's our time. God says, if you believe me, anything you want or ask for, I can do it for you. Lift your hands and say, Lord, I, I claim that right now. John 15, 7 said, as you abide in me and my words abide in you, you'll ask for what you will and it will be done for you. It'll be granted to you by the Father in heaven. The problem is our faith. Paul didn't say fight the devil. He said we wrestle against, flesh, uh, against principalities and powers. But in the scripture he said fight the good fight of faith. So you need to stop looking outside of yourself. And you need to look inside yourself. And say Lord do I really believe you? Let me teach you something. Never say anything negative about situations or yourself. I'll repeat what I said before. No matter what you see, keep speaking in faith, believing. Hallelujah. Mark 11, 23 said, you speak to the mountain, it will obey you and move. In Isaiah 64 here, he said, the mountains will tremble and shake at your presence. Do we believe that? I, I ask you, do you believe that? I believe it. I don't care where I am or what I see. I know my God. And the Lord says again, I'm fixing things for you. My driver, I love you there. You're very excited. I love you, man. You're good man. This is my driver. He brought me from the hotel. He's taking the word, man. He's taking it. Be like him. Pull, pull, pull on the grace. Pull on the grace. Pull on the grace. Come on, tell him. Tell him to pull on it. Your faith will attract God. Your unbelief will send him away. Hebrews 11.6 said, without faith it's impossible to please God. And he said, I love those who diligently seek me. And believe me, for I will reward them. Hebrews 10.35-38 says, Cast not away your confidence. For it has a recompense of great reward. Oh yes. Oh yes. And he said the just will live by his faith. You have to believe when you see nothing that there's something there. <laughs> you have to believe and keep saying it and keep it in your heart and your mind that when you don't see it yet, it's still already there. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Merry Christmas, everybody. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have to look at things and say, okay, I don't see it yet, but it's there. 
When I look here, I see the church finished completely. In my, in my spirit, I, see I, I see everything there. The way you want to decorate it, everything you want to put here, I see it. I see it already. When you believe in God for money, you have to see that it's already coming to you. Even when people stole from you and try to mess you up. The curse of the Lord is upon them. But the power of God is upon the righteous. Someone shout yes. The righteous will flourish, but the wicked will be cut down. And this is the word of the Lord for this coming season also. I can include this as a prophecy for the new year. How many know I'm preaching some great things here? We can take this message and turn it into a book and send it around the world. And I want to get to the point that every week or two I can finish a new book and send it to the ends of the earth. Live transcripts from what heaven said as a fresh word to the earth and to people. That's my job as a leader to feed the sheep. And to help other leaders be raised up. Come on. That's the work of the gospel. And it's happening. I said it's happening. And it's going to happen more. Say amen. Amen. Mark 11:24 said this. The things that you desire. When you're praying, believe you receive them and you will have them. <laughs> uh -huh. There's a scripture in Isaiah also that says, while you're yet speaking, I will answer. I feel the anointing in Tala, Kenya. Somebody <laughs> shout. Somebody <laughs> shout hallelujah. <laughs> Like uh, our bishop Michael was, was saying. The, the name of this man of God came up on the radar. Just like that. I've never been here before. And the funny thing, when I met him, he said he knew me already. Uh, this is too much. Come on somebody, say praise the Lord. God, God knows all things. It's a sign and a wonder to show you something also. Anything you want God to do, he can do it in one minute. The fight, the battle that we have is how much can we believe him? You know, I like this building. I like a big place. I like a high ceiling. I love it. Let's lift our hands and thank God for this property and this church. Father, we, we call it finished completely. The colors, the design, the things, everything beautiful. And the Lord says, my son, listen to me. I want you to get the good chairs for all the people. Not these plastic ones. I want you to get those cushion chairs for the whole church. I want you to make this place as elegant as you can to look beautiful for me, says the Lord. God says, I'll open up doors for you. You'll get things for almost nothing. You'll, you'll have favor. People will give. People will give for the work of the house of God. And you'll find uh, people that just say, you know, I'll give them to you for this price. So There's a principle about a Jewish person. They don't want to pay retail for anything. They only want to own it or pay wholesale. 
So we need to get our things at less cost. Come on, somebody. And somebody will be in need to sell something that you need, and you just say, I can offer you this, and they'll say, okay. That's a prophecy, by the way. Praise the Lord. And this whole town, this whole area is going to be touched by heaven. Father, these people, I, could, I keep seeing them in the spirit, these people doing witchcraft. Put them down. Put them out of business. We destroy their shrines and their altars and their mess and their nonsense. In Jesus' name. Put them down and shut them up. And I pray the Holy Ghost can touch them and save them and fill them with the Holy Ghost and they get delivered. And they repent for what they've been doing. I prophesy over the Ukambani region, Machakos, Makweni, Kitui, Tala, Tala, to Ruai, all this whole area, all around, 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 around. That God is going to begin to save many people from wicked behaviors and bring them into his, his kingdom. The other option is that they die. My friend, my friend, Bishop J.B. Masinde, he says this about the people that do witchcraft. He says you, you only have three choices. Stop it. Stop it. Repent. And get saved. Or die. Your choice. The devil has no place when you don't let him have any place. Come on, somebody. I was in Kitui one time. And I had a vision. Oh, I know God sent me here. I know God sent me here. I know this is God. I saw a vision. I, I saw the ugly devil sitting on a, on, on a little throne like a chair. And the Lord said, knock the legs from the chair. So I said, okay, let's work with the angels. Let them do it. And I spoke the prophecy. And I saw in the spirit the angel of the Lord walk to, to where the chair was. And he broke one leg off the chair. And the devil, like a fool, fell down on the ground. And he was humiliated. He was humiliated. The chair was broken. He was down. And the Lord said, That's what I'm going to do to the devil. And the workers of darkness in this land. Are you hearing me? Lift your hands and let's pray. Agree with me in that. When you let powers of darkness rule and operate, you'll suffer. You'll suffer because of that. When you rise up and say, no, it can't happen here. Because I'm God's, I'm God, I'm God's man, or you say you're God's woman. So they can't, they can't, they can't operate here. Tell the devil right yes. now. Tell the devil right now. Yes, you. Say it again. Say devil. You're finished. In this land. This is our land. You don't have to scream. You can whisper. Loudness is not power. Authority is power. You could speak very softly with authority. And it can do more than a thousand men screaming in their voices. Say to the devil that Devil, you're finished here. You're finished here. We cast you out of this land. Completely in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Clap your hands right now. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Give me a woo-woo. No, no, who sang me? 
Don't forget we're in Africa. Come on, you got to give me some of that. No, musanga mine sanga. Come on. Woo! You you ladies, you know how to do that, right? If I saw some wild animals come into church, I would be very happy. I like Africa. It's Africa. Cool. It's beautiful. You people of Africa, you're beautiful. You're not losers. You're not low. You're not bad. The devil is the one who's bad. But God is good. <laughs> All the time. Amen. 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 Say it in Kamba. What? Guy. Guy. Ne. Ne. Moseo. Moseo. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Watch out. Watch uh. out. Tell the devil, I'm, I'm looking at you. To cast you out of everywhere. When you drive by the way of the road and you see something evil, curse it. Speak to it. And, say, and you see things happening in your family, problems and all that. Say, no, 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 you can't do that. Let me tell you how poverty is an enemy. Because it keeps people in an uncomfortable situation. Poverty makes you feel bad even about yourself. You, you may not have a nice car to drive on the road in your own car. When you have your own car, you feel good. How many want a car? Let me prophesy. There's cars coming in this land. Here. People that never had a car are going to get a car and they're going to drive to church. Amen. Amen. Every time I say that, it manifests. How many believe God for a car? Now, you may not get the Mercedes or the Range Rover. Don't worry. Don't worry. Just get a car. Just get one. Find a way. You could buy an old car for 500000 Somebody can be touched by God to give you a car. Lift your hands and say, I receive it. Yeah. Not hard. I say amen. And don't borrow money from people. Just believe God to get it supernaturally. I, I, don't, I don't know what the future holds, but I say, I want to come back here and see a bunch of cars. Here. I, I want to come here one day. The church, the church will be completely finished. And there'll be lines of cars around the building. Come on, somebody. And some of you that are here and you that are listening later, it's you that's going to have that car. <laughs> somebody say, Wee! So you ride in a matatu full of noise and full of people. It even smells bad in there. There's noise. And you can't even think in your mind. Your mind is crazy. Be because the devil wants to put all that pressure or oppression on you. But when you have your own car, you can put on a nice worship, a nice worship music. You, you, can, you can put on a good sermon by your pastor or me or somebody. Yeah. And God could be in the car with you. Now your perspective begins to change. You, you feel on top of things instead of below things. Even now you have the Bolt, right? Bolt and Uber. Thank God for them. But why would you want to ride in a car with some crazy guy who's maybe even full of the devil? 
Some of them have very bad okay. attitudes. And you don't even feel comfortable there. Praise the Lord. But when you have your own car, tint the windows, and put some fragrance in there, and put on some good anointed worship music, even the African music if you like it, and, and have fun while you're driving. And then let, ask God to speak to you as you're driving. If you don't want to drive, get a driver. Let, let somebody drive you in your car. No you problem. Try. Someone say, Hakuna Matata. Matata. According to my faith, be it unto me. We need cars. We need vehicles. I can see in the realm of the spirit, the, 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 in the realm of the spirit, something is opening right now. I see it. Oh, God. I, God, I feel the anointing. I feel the anointing here. We prophesy vehicles for your people. And land and houses and buildings and offices and all kinds of things. And businesses. Oh, yes. Someone say praise the Lord. How do you say praise the Lord? What? Ataiwe. Yes, so. That's hard. Atai. Ataiwe. Ataiwe. Yes, so. Yes, so. Yes. Ataiwe. Yes, so. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah. Ataiwe. Yes, so. Yes, so. Yes. I know him. Amen. I know him. Amen. I know Jesus who he is. Amen. Yes, so. Nipwana. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, he is. He's Lord of all. How many, how many want to have a business, in your, a, business a good business? Amen. Father, I, I prophesy, I prophesy by the, hand, by the hand of God, God's going to arrange things for you. He's fixing things for you. Let me tell you something about God right now. I don't have to stand here and tell you what's going to happen in the nation. I can do that any day the Lord speaks to me. It doesn't even have to be New Year's because I hear God all the time. In fact, I'll tell you something that might scare you a little bit. It might even scare you a lot. God speaks to me every single day. Me. Maybe not everybody. But I'm his prophet to the nations. He talks to me every day. He spoke to me yesterday. He spoke to me the day before. He spoke to me this morning. He's speaking to me and through me right here, right now. To hear the voice of the Lord is an amazing thing. But everybody has the voice of the Lord right here. John chapter 1. The word was with God and the word was God. God said, man will not live by this or that bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of my mouth. Isaiah 55, 10 and 11 says, I'll send my word, and it will perform and prosper the thing I sent it to do. And it will not return back to me empty. But it will have, it will have performed what I sent it to do. So the words coming out of me right now, that God wants to fix things for you, 
He wants to raise you up as a savior in the land. He wants to make you a deliverer. He wants you to walk by faith and not by sight. He will answer by fire the request that you have. His presence will come down and shake the land. Witches and evil people will be put down. God's men and women will be put up. This church will be finished completely beautiful. There's going to be cars and vehicles. There'll be new houses for you. There'll be new businesses for you. All this and more I've just said. Now, let me, there's more, but let me tell you something about God. Uh, we need to get this, this message typed and put into point form and give it to the bishop. And, you, and, and put it in the internet that you can send it to your, your people of the church. And, and say this is what God said on Sunday, December 24th. Someone say praise the Lord. Someone say praise the Lord. Let me tell you something about God. I'll tell you something about God. Let me tell you something about God. He, he doesn't just care about the nation. He cares about you. He cares about me, Thomas. He cares about you, John. He cares Thomas, about you, you are Michael. Are you, are you Lena? Wait, our Lena. He, yeah, uh, you see, uh, he cares about Lena. He cares. Yes, yes, that's right. He cares about my friend here, the driver man. What is your name? What is your name? Paul. Oh, he cares about Paul. All these babies, he cares about all of you. I went upstairs for a minute and I saw the babies. When I walked in, they all jumped up and screamed, Welcome! So somebody make sure the children come and see us before they leave. At the end I'm not going to preach all day. I'll be finished in a few minutes. But I got to tell you this about God. He cares about nations. There's a realm of the prophecy that goes to nations. And God uses me in that. Has used me extensively. As Bishop Michael was saying. In 2002, God said Nairobi will become a cosmopolitan, world-class city. And I, I came back to Nairobi in 2004. <coughs> it wasn't done yet. Then in 2007, I came and a revival broke loose in the city. And hundreds of thousands of people came to my meetings. Hundreds of thousands of people. One meeting, 1,000. Another meeting, 2,000. Another meeting, 3,000. Another meeting, 500. Another meeting, 5,000. Another meeting. And cumulatively, we counted over 300,000 people that came to my meetings in Nairobi. And this stupid devil tried to rise up his ugly head. Through some of his friends. Some of the devil's friends. And I hate to say some of them were preachers. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a story for another day. But God is God anyway. He never changes his mind about what he wants to do. So in 2007, the Lord showed me many visions and I began to prophesy. 
about new superhighway. It wasn't there. New expressway, it wasn't there. Train lines across the country, trains going across the country, it wasn't there. Yes, uh, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, Westlands and towns being developed, beautiful things, uh, uh -huh. the malls and the expansion of, of, of the city. The infrastructures in so many ways. And let me tell you something. The devil wanted to cause violence. And he tried. But guess what? I was here. And I stopped it. I'll tell you the date. January 13th, 2008. At 7 o'clock p.m. At the Methodist Guest House in Lavington. I was on the platform and the hand of God fell on the meeting. And that's when the violence had been going on. <coughs> Mass action and all these things that were, they were, people were killing each other over political and tribal differences and all that. And I stood in the pulpit and God said this. And I declared, I'll tell you my name again in case you forget, Thomas Manton IV, that's who it was, it was me. Yeah, and I stood on the platform and I hit my hand on the pulpit and I said, by the word of the Lord, I said this. Mass action will become mass nothing this week. That was Sunday night. January 13, 2008. At 7 p.m. January 6th, the Sunday before, we couldn't meet because the chaos was too much. Nobody could come out. And during the week, I said, no, I'm not going to stay in. We have to go out. People called me from America and said, Prophet, get out of there. Get out of Kenya. What are you doing there? And one of my friends in America said this. He, he said, I feel the Holy Spirit is telling me to tell you to leave there. I, I said, my brother. Don't ever say the Holy Spirit said something he's not saying. He, he, got, he got very afraid on the phone. And he said, well, I, I'm sorry, but I, I, I'm just concerned about you. I said, yeah, but don't say God said when he didn't say. I said, God has me right here for a reason. And if you remember, the city was closed. There were military in the streets. I drove around and saw them. It was, it was surreal. It was crazy. It was frightening to people. But I got to tell you this. By Thursday, five days later, everything stopped. Because God had a prophet to speak for him. We're saviors on Mount Zion. Can you say hallelujah? 1,300 people died. Over 600,000 people were displaced. From their places. But it could have been a hundred thousand people. Uh, yes? If it had not been stopped. 
So if God can use me like that, and, and no man can do anything like that. It's not possible. But if God can use me like that, he can also use you. Lift your hands right now. Such as I have, give I unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk in power. Hallelujah. Now to my message for five minutes. The Lord spoke to me and said, tell the people again this. And I'm going to read from my book here. Now, I could talk about prophecies that God's had me deliver to Kenya all day, and we'll, not, we'll, we'll be here till the night time. But that's just a couple of them. How many know there's a train line across the country now, the SGR? Let, let me tell you what's coming next. Electric buses. Yeah, and get rid of these junky old buses that pollute the air. And the roads are continuously being fixed. The Lord spoke about the miracle of road development. It's been happening since we prophesied that in 2007. Now, another one just happened this week. I saw it in the news. And we post them on our, fa on our, on our Facebook page. My Facebook page is uh, facebook.com forward sign Thomas Manton. That's all you need. When you type that URL, it takes you right to my page. Praise the Lord. And now the agreement has just been made for the big highway to go to the coast to the city. They're going to build another super highway in Kenya. Someone lift your hands up right now. And it's almost 500 billion, 473 billion. They're, they're approving the thing right now. The day will come you can fly fast on the highways everywhere. It's uh -huh. Kenya, 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 Kenya is becoming a modern country. Some will clap your hands and say, Praise the Lord. But as much as God is concerned about them and all the people of the nation, he's concerned about you. Put your hand on your heart and say, God cares about me. All right, I just want to make one statement as I'm closing. I have to, I have, I have to do this. The Lord spoke this word to me last night. He said, I, I want you to speak a little, a, a little bit about leadership. We need the right leadership. And this is from my book, Prophetic Keys to Successful Living. Everything rises and falls based on leadership. Bad leadership, bad leadership, you have nothing but problems. Good leadership, things begin to prosper and flourish. And as I said, the devil has no place. The only place that fool has is under our feet. Put your foot down, even the babies, put your foot down. Mom and dad, teach your babies about who God is. And don't make the devil to be a big devil. He's a little devil. Why? Nikki. Why? Nikki. 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 Because he's because he's defeated. No, no, He's a loser. Why would you exalt the loser? Do people even like losers? They don't like losers. But the devil is the father of lies. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. 
But let's look past that and look at what Jesus said in John 10, 10. He said, I have come that you'll have life and that more abundantly. Someone say praise the Lord. Somebody tried to argue and say, well, does that mean it's just about spiritual life? No. Because he said you have life and life more abundantly. He said, he said two different things there. That means you're supposed to prosper. Part of a preacher's job, if he's a good preacher, part of a real bishop, not a fake one, a righteous man in the ministry, a big part of his job is to teach people how to prosper. Say amen. Amen. Did you hear what he said? And a lot of people don't want to do that. They want to talk about all kinds of things. That really don't mean anything to people. Don't complain about people and say, oh, they just want money. No, people need money. Money is important. Someone say money is important. If you don't think money is important, you're living off of somebody else. You don't have your own. If you have bills to pay and you don't have the money, you have a problem. So how will God provide? By us following his voice. And he'll bless us by following good leadership. Say hallelujah. Amen. Say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Are you tired? <laughs> say hallelujah. I say yeah. Some of you sitting there looking like. Say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. It's God's will for us to be successful. Are you enjoying this? Are you learning anything today? Oh, yes. It's God's will that we prosper and be in good health even as our soul prospers. Let me pray for healing right now. For, first, I want to pray for prosperity for people. That, Lord, you begin to bless your people. Because the scripture said that first. John said in 3 John 2, uh, I wish, pray, and desire. That's King James, New King James, NIV. I, yeah, NK, uh, New King James. Then, King and, James. And New International Version. NIV. I wish, pray, and desire above everything else that you prosper. Therefore, it's very important. Ecclesiastes 10.19 said, money answers all things. Ecclesiastes 7, 11 and 12 says, money is a defense. It defends you. And wisdom is a defense. Say praise the Lord. Say praise the Lord. Poverty is nothing but a curse. It limits your life. It keeps you bound and down. But God wants you to be liberated and lifted up. That's, that is a fact. That is a fact. That is the truth. John 8, 32 said the truth will make you free when you know it. So part of a leader's job is to teach people how to, pro how to profit, how to prosper.
Isaiah 48:17 said The prophet Isaiah said I am the Lord your God who teaches you how to profit and I lead you and I lead you in the way you should go Lift your hands and say Lord lead me and guide me Lead me into the realm of profit. Now it's been said that when you want to profit, P-R-O-F-I-T, you need to listen to a prophet, P-R-O-P-H-E-T. Because we're speaking on behalf of God. God shares his, his mind and his heart through his prophet. And he can also do it through a good pastor, a good bishop, a good evangelist. A good teacher. How many know I have a lot to teach on? How many know I have a lot? How many, know, how many can feel that I have a lot? But we can't do it all in one service. We'll have to do another, another one. Someone say praise the Lord. We, we can't do it all in one meeting. I could go till tonight and not stop. You can no, see that, right? I have hundreds and hundreds of scriptures in my mind memorized. I could preach, I could preach for six hours and not stop. And that's my study, that's my life, and it's the gift of God. Say praise the Lord for that. But let's pray for, so I pray for prosperity. I pray it happens for everybody. Let's pray for healing. Father, we thank you for your healing touch. Everything that's afflicted us, we curse it and cast it out and reverse it. And we command healing upon us right now. Jesus name. Let the healing power of God flow. Let it flow upon us, Lord. I am healed in Jesus' name. I am whole. I am well. I am strong. If I need anything fixed in my body, you're fixing it. You said you're fixing things for us. Oh, I feel the anointing. Father, let the healing power of God flow in this house. Let healing miracles flow in this house. Let healing miracles flow across the land. Let the breakthrough of uh, financial breakthrough and prosperity come to every house. Show people what to do. Show them what your will is and what you want to have them be doing. In Jesus' name. And make it well in their soul. Brilliant in their mind. Let the touch of the Holy Ghost be upon the people. Now the Lord says when you want to prosper, you need good leaders. If you want to suffer, you have you look you have selfish, evil leaders. And this is not just in the government. Don't blame the government for everything. They're doing what they do. Some of them love to steal. They see money. They want to steal it. Hey, they'll go to hell for that. Don't envy a man that's going to burn in hell. And some are already there today. Because they were corrupt. Another thing God had me prophesy over Kenya was he's, he's, he's gonna, he wants to attack corruption. And it's going to intensify in the time to come. And I prophesied this years ago and nobody said anything like that. So people in Kenya say, how can corruption go away? It's our, it's our life. And, 
And God sent me from America and said, no, it's, it's not supposed to be like that. God wants your children to grow up in a, in a generation that is free from corruption. Hallelujah. That corruption is not the order of things. Now every day people are being exposed. One, one lady had eight jobs. But you're not eight people. You're only one person. You can only have one job. Somebody on a salary of uh, 100,000 has 90 million in their bank accounts. And they bought houses and eight new cars. Where did they get the money? It's being exposed more every day. Lift your hands. If, if, if you want to prosper, you don't need to steal because stealing will take you to hell. You need to get God's mind and his ideas on how you can have a business that will prosper. Hallelujah. Even your ministry should prosper. Okay, so I have a whole chapter here about leadership. And I, you can get the book, okay? I'll do something here. Uh, if, uh, this is, uh, I think it was 1,200 and it's 1,000. But if you want this today, I have some copies. I'll do something for you. I'll give it to you for just 500. Somebody go, oh my God. So, I, I'm sowing half into you. And, and if, you, if you want to get it, you can even come. I'll sign a copy for you. Bishop and your wife, I have a gift for you. I have a gift copy for you. Okay, and I'll speak a blessing over your life also. So when we close the service, you can see me. We'll have a table here somewhere. <laughs> One of the protocol men uh, said he would arrange that. So uh, and I want to speak a blessing over your life. There's no time in this service for me to prophesy to individuals. I can't do it right now. In fact, I really feel I want to close the I want to close the, the service right. I want to finish right now. Uh, but I'll read you one statement from my book here on the subject of leadership. I wrote this: a true apostle doesn't just pass their followers. He coaches potential champions into greatness. Somebody say praise the Lord. We're to teach people and lead them into good things. That's our job under the hand of God as leaders. Another thing, leaders see things that aren't there yet. A true leader, a true visionary sees things that are not there yet, but they're already there in his vision. And I want to I wanna prophesy that over you. Everybody stand up and let's lift our hands to God. I'm not, I'm not finished, but I'm going to stop. We'll, we'll continue in another service. But I want to pray that God blesses you and heals you and fixes things for you so your life can be a very successful place to live. Successful living. This is the book I wrote. Uh -huh. With the forward by Archbishop Harrison Nanga. 
By, by the way, if you want to know more about me, you can read what he wrote. He wrote three pages about the prophet and me. About the power of our ministry. Let me tell you something. The devil is very scared of me. And that idiot is defeated forever. Somebody say praise the Lord. And the devil and his ugly friends, they're defeated completely. And the wicked who've done wickedly, they're going to they're paying for what they've done. The book, the book of successful living is the Bible. And this, and this is number one. This is the best selling book of all time, the Holy Bible. The best selling book in all the world is the Bible. No book has been more known or popular or widely sold. Hey, you devil. You can't stop us. Shaitani is Shinwe. A Shinwe. Somebody say, A Shinwe. I feel the presence of God. Let the presence of the Lord touch you right now. And let God heal and fix you. Let God heal and fix you everywhere you're hurting. Physically, financially, in life. In your mind, in your heart, anywhere. God is fixing things that concern you. He's perfecting things that concern you. Just worship him right now for a minute and say, Lord, I receive. I thank you. I worship you, Lord Jesus. I worship you, Father God. I worship you, beloved Holy Spirit. You are working things out for me and for your people all over the world. This land of Kenya is, is, a, is, a, is a special place. But sometimes it seems very horrible. But the beauty can be seen by the eyes of the leader and the visionary. And that's me. I can see the beauty in the midst of the chaos. See, like the movie The Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> the beast is there the beast is there but we need to look at the beauty and father I declare right now that everything good is going to come into the hands of your beloved people and everything bad and evil is leaving them right now Nobody shall remain bewitched and oppressed. But everybody's going free today in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I declare, Father, that you're fixing things for us. And this is the word of the Lord for this season. That you're fixing things for us. Lay your hands on yourself right now and say, Lord, everywhere I have pain or problem in my body is being healed. I'm being healed right now. In the name of Jesus. I'm being blessed financially right now. In the name of Jesus. I'm being blessed in my soul, in my mind, in my emotions right now. And every bad memory I've had is being washed away. You're making me like Manasseh. His name meant the Lord made us to forget our trouble. Manasseh in the Bible means the Lord made me to forget my trouble. And God, that's a part of your nature. 
I bless this house. I bless this people. And let them also be a blessing to me. Let them honor the prophetic grace here. Even financially. I don't have any tricks. I don't have any uh, games to play. When, when you honor a servant of God financially, you're doing something unto God for your own blessing. And I, I don't know if an offering is going to be received. We hadn't discussed it, but it should be. And you could sow into this grace. This church can sow into this grace. The, the bishop and his wife and the leaders can sow into this anointing. I came here, I asked for nothing. Tell me if I asked for anything. Tell me. Somebody tell me if I asked for I, I asked for nothing. I came a long way to come here. A long way, a long way. And here we are. Now what are you going to do with the grace? We need to learn the art of sowing and reaping. And also touching the anointing with your seed and your faith. It will produce something great for you. So I want to challenge everybody to sow a seed into this grace as I'm stepping off the platform. Bishop can take over. I release the service back into your hands. Let, let's honor each other. Let us show honor to the anointing. Yes. And God is watching us to see what we're going to do. I found out about a need somebody had. I took care of it. I found out about another need. Someone else had a need. I took care of it. Why? Because I want to give. I want to give. I want to give. And let me tell you a really amazing, brilliant secret. When you give, you're really giving to yourself. Because when you plant the seed, the harvest comes back for you. You release something from your hand. When you release something from your hand, it doesn't leave your life. It comes back multiplied to you. You have to believe that. But it's really true. I have an evangelist friend in America. God has raised him up. He's extremely powerful under the hand of God. He said, I don't know who the big givers are to my ministry. I don't look. And he, and he made this statement that's life changing. He said, I focus on my giving. That's, that's what I look at. And that's what I do. And he said, it all just comes back. A month ago, somebody gave my friend a jet. <laughs> a, fal a Falcon 50. That's not a small plane. And gave it to him. They painted it. They fixed it up to bring to deliver to him. Why does something like that happen for somebody? Because he's giving all the time. As a good leader, I have to teach you the truth. Make giving your lifestyle. Don't look to use, abuse, and take. That's evil in the eyes of God. Be a giver. Lift your hands. Receive a fresh grace to give. You see a need, you give. You see a, an anointed servant, you give. You see a project, you give. 
You don't think, ah, I'm just not going to do anything, it's okay. Like, like so many churches, so many people, they treat servants of God like so badly like that. I call it out, it's wrong. You do what you want, but it's in the eyes of God, it's wrong. And someone like that doesn't get blessed. Someone like that doesn't get blessed. The key to blessing is being generous and honoring. So this is all planned, this is all led by the Holy Spirit. So we want you to bless our, our, our work. We have, we, I'm going to a children's home today, a children's ministry. And I'm doing so many things like that. Two weeks ago I was with the Maasai people. And we're prophesying over the whole Maasai community. We're doing so much. And as you tap this grace, miracles will come back to you. In Jesus' name. Do you believe that? Wow. This is a great church. I love you people. I feel the free flow of the Spirit and the Word of the Lord here. I tell you prophetically from the Lord, you're good people. I, I have, I'll have the testimony, I found good people in Tala. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Lift your hands and receive. The presence of the Lord is here. I, I don't know if you could feel... You, you just feel is that the atmosphere is beautiful. There's something sweet in there. You can feel the Holy Spirit. Father, let your angels go and cause things to happen for people, for your people. And I release the grace of heaven upon them. In Jesus' name. I will speak to you again. Let's receive our bishop. I love you. Dear brethren, in Psalms 119, 105, the Bible says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Truly, God has sent prophet Dr. Thomas Manton IV to proclaim and declare his word of abundance and prosperity prophetically unto the nations. Thus, brothers and sisters in Christ, I urge you, just as the Bible says in Matthew 10, 41, whoever welcomes a prophet, as a prophet, will receive a prophet reward. Let us welcome and embrace the prophet of God by supporting his ministry. You can sow a seed, you can send your love offering, you can support or partner in the ministry program using the details displayed on your screen. For when the prophet of God decrees a blessing upon you, indeed, you shall be blessed.